श्री स्वामी समर्थ अवधूत चिंतन श्री गुरुदेव दत्त सदगुरु श्री साईनाथाय नम वेलकम व्यूअर्स टू सोल स्पिरिच्युअलिटी होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड श्री साई सच्चरित्र चैप्टर ट्वेंटी दास गणुष प्रॉब्लेम सॉल्व बाय काका स्मेड सर्वंट इन दिस चैप्टर हेमाड पंत डिस्क्राइब्स हाउ दास गणुष प्रॉब्लेम वॉज सॉल्व बाय काका साहेब दीक्षित मेड सर्वंट प्रिलिमिनरी साई और द लॉर्ड वॉज ओरिजिनली फॉर्मलेस ही अज्यूम्ड अ फॉर्म फॉर द सेक ऑफ भक्तास विथ द हेल्प ऑफ द एक्ट्रेस माया ही प्लेड द पार्ट ऑफ द एक्टर इन द बिग ड्रामा ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्स लेट अस रिमेंबर एंड विज्युअलाइज श्री साई लेट अस गो टू शिर्डी एंड सी केयरफुली द प्रोग्राम्स आफ्टर द नून आरती आफ्टर द आरती सेरेमनी वॉज ओवर साई यूज टू कम आउट ऑफ द मस्जिद एंड स्टैंडिंग ऑन इट्स एज डिस्ट्रीब्यूट उदी टू द डिओटीज विथ वेरी काइंड एंड लविंग लुक्स द भक्तास ऑल्सो गॉट अप विथ इक्वल फॉर क्लेस्ट द फीट एंड स्टैंडिंग and staring at him enjoyed the shower of udi baba passed handfuls of udi into the palms of the devotees and marked their foreheads with udi with his fingers the love he bore for them in his heart was boundless then he addressed the bhaktas as follows o oh bhau go to take your lunch you anna go to your lodgings You Bapu enjoy your dishes. In this way he accosted each and every devotee and sent them home. Even now you can enjoy these sights if you bring into play your imagination. You can visualize and enjoy them. Now bringing Sai before our mental vision, let us meditate on him from his feet upwards to his face and prostrating before him humbly, lovingly. and respectfully revert to the story of this chapter but in case you are new to our channel then please consider subscribing and also click on the bell icon so that you will get notified of all our updates also like and share this video with your friends and also do leave your comments we wait for your feedback very eagerly thank you ईशावस्य उपनिषद दास गणू वन स्टार्टेड टू राइट अ मराठी कॉमेंट्री ऑन द ईशावस्य उपनिषद लेट अस फर्स्ट गिव अ ब्रीफ आइडिया ऑफ दिस उपनिषद बिफोर प्रोसीडिंग फर्दर इट इज कॉल्ड अ मंत्रोपनिषद एज इट इज एम्बोडिड इन द मंत्रास ऑफ द वेदिक संहिता इट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स द लास्ट और द फोर्टी एथ चैप्टर ऑफ द वजसने संहिता और यजुर्वेद एंड इट इज देर फोर कॉल्ड वजसनई संहितोपनिषद बींग एम्बोडिड इन वेदिक संहिता दिस इज रिगार्डेड एज सुपीरियर टू ऑल अदर उपनिषद विच अकर इन द ब्राह्मणास एंड अरण्यकास दैट इज एक्सप्लेनेटरी ट्रीटिसेस ऑन मंत्रास एंड रिचुअल्स नॉट ओनली दिस अदर उपनिषद आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी कॉमेंट्रीज on the truths mentioned briefly in the ishavasya upanishad for instance the biggest of the upanishads namely the brihadaranyaka upanishad is considered by pandit satvalekar to be a running commentary on the ishavasya upanishad professor r d ranade says the ishopanishad is quite a small upanishad and yet it contains many hints which show an extraordinarily piercing insight within the short compass of 18 verses it gives a valuable mystical description of the atman a description of the ideal sage who stands unruffled in the minds of temptations and sorrows an adumbration of the doctrine of karma yoga as later formulated and finally a reconciliation of the claims of knowledge and works the most valuable ideas that lies at the root of the upanishad is that of a logical synthesis between the two opposites of knowledge and work 
which are both required according to the Upanishad to be annulled in a higher synthesis. In another place, he says that the poem of the Ishopanishad is a co-mixture of moral, mystical and metaphysical. From the brief description given above about this Upanishad, anyone can see how difficult it is to translate this Upanishad in a vernacular language and brief out its exact meaning. Das Ganu translated it in Marathi Ovi form verse by verse. But as he did not comprehend the gist or essence of the Upanishad, he was not satisfied with his performance. He therefore consulted some learned men regarding his doubts and difficulties and discussed with them at great length. They did not solve them nor did they give any rational satisfactory explanation. So Das Ganu was a little restless over this matter. Sadguru only competent and qualified to explain. As we have seen, this Upanishad is the quintessence of the Vedas. It is the science of self-realization. It is the sight or weapon which can rend as under the bondage of life and death and make us free. Therefore, he thought that he who has himself attained self-realization can only give him the true or correct interpretation of the Upanishad. When nobody could satisfy Das Ganu, he resolved to consult Sai Baba about this. When he got an opportunity to go to Shirdi, he saw Sai Baba, prostrated himself before him and mentioned his difficulties about the Ishavasya Upanishad and requested him to give the correct solution. Sai Baba blessed him and said, you need not be anxious. There is no difficulty about the matter. The maid servant of Kaka, that is Kaka Sahib Dikshit, will solve your doubts at Vilepalle on your way home. The people who were present then and heard this thought that Baba was joking and said, How could an illiterate maid servant solve the difficulties of this nature? But Das Ganu thought otherwise. He was sure that whatever Baba spoke must come true. Baba's word was the decree of the Brahma. Kaka's maid servant. On fully believing in Baba's words, he left Shirdi and came to Vilepalle, a suburb of Mumbai, and stayed with Kaka Sahib Dikshit. There, the next day, when Das Ganu was enjoying his morning nap, he heard a poor girl singing a beautiful song in clear and melodious tone. The subject matter of the song was a crimson colored sari. How nice it was! How fine was its embroidery! How beautiful were its ends and borders, etc. He liked the song so much that he came out and saw that it was being sung by a young girl, the sister of Namya, who was a servant of Kaka Sahib. The girl was cleaning vessels and had only a torn rag on her person. On seeing her impoverished condition and her jovial temperament, Das Ganu felt pity for her. And when Rao Bahadur M.V. Pradhan next day gave him a pair of dhotas, he requested him to give a sari to the poor little girl also. Rao Bahadur bought a good childi, that is a small sari, and presented it to her. Like a starving person getting luckily good dishes to eat, her joy knew no bounds. Next day, she wore the new sari, and out of great joy and merriment, whirled, danced round, and played fugri with other girls, and excelled them all. The day following, she kept the new sari in her box at home, and came with the old and torn rags. But she looked as merry as she did the previous day. On seeing this, Das Ganu's pity was transferred into admiration. He thought that the girl being poor had to wear a torn rag, but now she had a new sari which she kept in reserve and putting on the old rag, strutted herself, showing no trace of sorrow or dejection. Thus, he realized that all our feelings of pain and pleasure depend upon the attitude of our mind. 
On thinking deeply over this incident, he realized that a man ought to enjoy whatever God has bestowed on him in the firm conviction that he besets everything from behind and before and on all sides and that whatever is bestowed on him by God must be for his own good. In this particular case, the impoverished condition of the poor girl, her torn rag and the new sari, the donor, the dance and the acceptance were all parts of the Lord and pervaded by Him. Hence, Das Ganu got a practical demonstration of the lesson of the Upanishad, the lesson of contentment with one's own lot in the belief that whatever happens is ordained by God and is ultimately good for us. Unique Method of Teaching From this incident, the reader will see that Baba's method was unique and varied. Though Baba never left Shirdi, he sent some to Machindragad, some to Kollapur or Solapur for practicing sadhanas. To some, he appeared in his usual form. To some, he appeared in waking or dreaming state, day or night, and satisfied their desires. It is impossible to describe all the methods that Baba used in imparting instructions to his bhaktas. In this particular case, he sent Das Ganu to Vilepale, where he got his problem solved through the maid servant. To those who say that it was not necessary to send Das Ganu outside and that Baba could have personally taught him, we say that Baba followed the right or the best course. Or how else could Das Ganu have learnt a great lesson that the poor maid servant and her sari were pervaded by the Lord? Now we close the chapter with another beautiful extract about this Upanishad. The Ethics of the Ishavasya Upanishad One of the main features of the Ishavasya Upanishad is the ethical advice it offers and it is interesting to note that the ethics of the Upanishads are definitely based upon the metaphysical position advanced in it. The very opening words of the Upanishad tell us that God pervades everything as a corollary from the metaphysical position, the ethical advice it offers is that a man ought to enjoy whatever God bestows on him in the firm belief that as he pervades everything, whatever is bestowed on him by God must be good. It follows naturally that the Upanishad should forbid us from coveting another man's property. In fact, we are fittingly taught here a lesson of contentment with one's own lot in the belief that whatever happens, it is divinely ordained and it is hence good for us. Another moral advice is that a man must spend his lifetime always in doing action, especially the karmas enjoined in the shastras, in a mood of believing resignation to his will. Inactivity, according to this Upanishad, would be the cancer of the soul. It is only when a man spends his lifetime on doing actions in this matter that he can hope to attain the ideal of Neshkarmya. Finally, the text goes on to say that a man who sees all beings in the self and sees the self as existing in all beings, in fact for whom all beings and everything that exists have become the self, how can such a man suffer infatuation? What ground would such a man have for grief? Loathfulness, infatuation and grief verily proceed from our not being able to see the Atman in all things. But a man who realizes the oneness of all things for whom everything has to become the self must ipso facto cease to be affected by the common foibles of humanity. Bow to Shri Sai. Peace be to all. Dear friends and viewers, if you like this video, please shower us some of your love by liking this video and by subscribing to our channel. Also share this video with your friends 
and do leave your comments or feedback in the comment section thank you shri swami samarth avdhut chintana shri gurudev dat sadguru shri sai nathaya namaha